Sports Show. Of course, on the weekend, there was the National Premier Soccer League. The champions, Adelaide City, had to go a little bit of overtime to get there. In the end, though, were good enough to win one. 11 years in the waiting. The coach, Paul Pezos, and Nicholas Booker, the vice captain, joined us because they're the only two blokes sober enough to talk to us today. <laughs> hey, firstly, boys, congratulations. Thanks, Phil. Thank Appreciate it. Uh, let's start with you first, Paul. Uh, you know, 120 minutes, it's, it's nil all, and you know you're going to the shootout. Well, what's the coach think when, when it gets to that stage? It's, it's a do-or-die battle. Um, I just said to the boys, enjoy the moment. When he went to the penalties, I shot off and ran into the change room, disappeared because I can't fathom watching penalty shootouts. So everyone was saying, where's Pez gone? Where's Pez gone? <laughs> and I'm in the change room just waiting to the end. Um, so, yeah, the outcome was good. So you're in the change rooms, mate. The roar of the crowd. There was nearly 3,000 people at the game, but it sounded like 30,000 people. Yeah. Can, can you hear the roar in the room? So you got an idea of where it's going? 100% I could hear the roar. It was a great spectacle to be at Martin because everyone was so On top. so close to us. Uh, um, yeah, I could hear the roar. Didn't know which way it was going, and I heard one big roar. So I snuck my head out the, uh, the door, and I saw this big black and white flag running across the pitch. <laughs> so that's when I did the bolt down the stairs, took my hat off, and nearly did my hammy running down. So... <laughs> Yeah, it was good fun. With the penalty shootout, is there much tactic to it or is it almost like luck that it hits the back of the net? Yeah, well, it's a bit of, bit of both and, and, and fatigue comes into play mm. as well. And, uh, you know, I've been as a player on a numerous of penny shootouts and uh, it's all about composure and just trying to go the way you want to go and hit the back of the net. But if it plays on your mind and it happens because fatigue sets in, fatigue plays a lot of plays a lot of funny business with your mind sometimes, it can be tough as well. And in those final minutes of the game, when you sort of know that you're going to head into a penalty shootout, does your mindset have to switch at all? Yeah, yeah. we look, to be honest, on the Friday night, the game was at such a high intensity and, and high tempo, and so like t the tension was there for both teams because both teams didn't want to lose that. You're like you're almost settling for it because mm. you're like don't make a mistake, don't concede, but can we can we sneak a goal? And it wasn't really happening. So with about five minutes to go, you're sort of like, all right, you're preparing yourself mentally, and you know you're getting ready for the break to sort of get your energy levels up. And then yeah, uh, once the full time whistle goes for extra time, and we're having a chat about penalties, we have a discussion about who's going to take it, and we basically encourage everyone to know where they're going to put the penalty, um, pick a spot early, and if the keeper saves it, great. But as long as you hit the target, um, yeah, I think you're a chance. And, you know, sometimes as a player, you're out on the field, you've got a feel for how the game's going. Yeah. It kind of looks like for the spectator, coaches are different, mate. We're a bit more stressed when mm -hmm. we're, we're coaching. But you feel like you had all the play, but you're just not able to score. Yep. So maybe... I, did it feel like that for you in the first half that you had all the opportunities? Yeah, definitely. I th like um, uh, in the first 13 minutes, we had a couple of chances and then their goalkeeper was outstanding, um, not just for the first half, for the whole game. And at times you're thinking in your head, wow, like, are we going to beat this guy? You know, maybe we shouldn't take it to penalty shootouts because he might have an amazing shootout, um, amazing um, some saves and stuff. So, but... Um, at the end of the day, we always have faith in our team and we thought, look, we're going to defend well. Uh, mm. We didn't really concede many chances. I think their best chance was like the 114th minute. Um, so we have faith in each other. And, you know, look, I mean, call me a bit... Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for when it's set in the stars, but the last time I won a championship, we won on penalties and it was nil-nil. So mm. I told the boys that and they sort of had a bit of a relief. So they got excited thinking, all right, let's get the job done. And that, uh, hopefully that gave them a little bit of a kick. And they say you can win or lose a grand final before it even starts. Yeah. And you speak about faith. How strong was your faith heading into the game before it even started? To be honest, the strongest it's been in years. Because yeah. obviously, like we had a chat before on air um, about the, the grand final losses previous. But this is a new group, new coach. Everything felt different this year. Uh, and I, I told the boys that. And the boys also said that to me. Because I even at times questioned it. But I got my faith... Um, you know, not questioned, but they said, listen, books, just believe, and I, I did. And we believed since last year when I spoke to Pez on the phone um, about this year we knew, so, yeah. So, mate, the last time they won it, Pez was playing for him. Does he walk in and say, look, I know all about <laughs> this stuff, boys, this is easy. I've won one as a player, so now as a coach. So is, he, is he pretty relaxed? How, how was he yeah. going to the game? Very relaxed, actually. Like last Monday, boy, uh, before training, got the boys together, said, boys, enjoy it. But, you know, you don't know how many times it can happen in your career, a grand final week, uh, all that sort of stuff. Enjoy the training sessions, work hard. Um, we've got here for a reason. Trust the process 
and the outcome will come. Isn't that great as a coach, Paul? That's the best sell ever, isn't it, mate? We walk in and we're nice and calm in to- inside. We're hemorrhaging. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never showed that to them. I think the three days leading up to the grand final, I couldn't sleep. And I was telling, you know, my, my supporting staff, I've got these butterflies in my stomach. Feels like I'm a player again. But I couldn't show that to the players yep. because I didn't want them to react to it. But, uh, yeah, it was a good outcome. It was a good outcome. And soccer's so tactical. What were the tactics for you, Paul, heading into the game for the boys? Yeah, our tactics change on depending who we play. And we had to change again because we played Comets, I think, four times plus the, fin- mm. uh, or the, the final as well. So... We we tweaked a few different things how we wanted to close them down how we wanted to how to, we wanted to attack them and then we changed our set pieces as well uh, which nearly paid off uh, I would have been the greatest coach if it came off but uh, um, it does change and you're always forever thinking and trying to be ahead of your opponent. Uh, defensively, when we spoke to you last time, you said that was the strength of, of the team. Certainly in the first half, they had no clear opportunities. Did you think you could maintain that again in the second half? Yeah, we we built a, a good resilient. Um, attitude feel towards the team and the game is evolving and we can't you can't just be an attacking team you've got to have your defense uh, structures lined up and we work really hard um, and I thought the longer the game went I, th- I thought the better off we were going to be because they went to uh, extra time the following week um, but it didn't happen uh, but still proud of what we've done and you come away with the win how good Amazing. How are the post-match celebrations? And I saw a few photos of yep. cigars, and yep. we've seen it in the AFL yep. Grand Final and the NBA do it all the time. I don't know, personally for me, it's probably the last thing I would feel like having after a big match with, when your lungs are probably still screaming. But like, what, what is it for you guys that, yeah, is yep. it part of the celebration or...? Yeah, we just sort of discussed it during the year about what we're going to do if we win because obviously we are confident that we could get there and have a crack at it. So that was one of the things. And then obviously, you know, we went back to the club and had a big uh, big dinner and drinks and um, all our supporters there, which is fantastic. Uh, being at the club for my 10th year this year, we haven't had anything like that in a long time. And since Pez has come back, we've sort of tried to bring that camaraderie and that family feel back to the club. And it, it, it was epitomised on Friday night, which is fantastic. So yeah, we just all wanted to be together for the next few days. and. The cigars was just one of the one of the novelty acts of the night, and Love it. Uh, yeah, the, part, the Saturday um, during the day went to one of the boys' house, and we just had a massive house party, and it was great. Yeah. I, I think I want to know how much of the champagne actually gets drunk, as opposed to how much of the champagne gets sprayed. Well, Phil, the funny thing was, I was still stuck on the pitch after the game. I didn't even get an ounce of champagne. Yeah, anyway. I didn't, uh, didn't get to spray anything. By the time I got in there, everyone was like, uh, uh, it was all gone. So. But, uh, mate, the, just the sheer feel of the crowd coming onto the pitch and all those people that came on had been... A lot of them had been with us during this, um, this process and even in the past when we've lost and they felt that relief on us as well and it's just... It was, okay, it's indescribable. Yeah, yeah, hey, to both of you guys. And you know, it, it's, a, it's a memory that lasts a lifetime. Yeah. You get a chance each year to get back with the same group and talk about how great you were. <laughs> Paul, you don't get that because they're expecting you to win one next year. Mate. <laughs> yeah. so, yeah, you, you've got about two more days, mate, and that's forgotten. Press Time to on. move on quickly. Hey, well done, boys. Fantastic for the club. Glad you had time to squeeze us in. Stay with us still. Plenty to come on the show.